Hey, this is Johnny Manchild. You're listening to the Pop Punk Pizza Party Podcast, sponsored by Fired. I keep my distance out of deference. It happens, of course. The frequency of this is dominating every discourse. I understand by God, by the challenge, what do we Hello. Hey, what's up? Uh, not so much. How are you? Ah, uh, good. Uh, this is, I'm Keith. This is uh, Chris over here. Hey, what's going on? And Justin. Hey, what's going on, man? I'm Johnny. Nice to meet you. All. So, yeah, definitely. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking us. Uh, this is exciting. So, uh, um, let's see. Let first of all, I just kind of want to get to know you. Uh, what what can you tell us about uh, just Johnny Manchild and the uh, the Poor Bastards? Uh, no, it's just a band. I've been in bands for like ever since I was a kid, and I kind of hit a point during college where I decided I wanted to make my own, you know, music. I'd been writing for a while. Um, it was born out of the jazz program at UCO, University of Central Oklahoma. Uh, I was, you know, I'm a jazz performance major. It's what my degree is in. And so I scouted, you know, players from the jazz bands. Um, that's how I found my drummer, Ethan. Uh, our, all of our original members came from there. Uh, but yeah, and I, it started definitely as a piano forward band and it still is uh piano kind of became my main instrument uh and it's slowly kind of branched out towards other genres uh really just as i've gotten bored with whatever i'm doing i'll go into something else <laughs> um but yeah uh that's it's it's kind of uh, a project that i spearhead and i've worked with kind of like a revolving cast of people and uh, made, throughout the years that makes sense too like you said it came from a jazz thing and i can definitely definitely, definitely feel that Absolutely. like i think it's uh you know I'll be, I'll be honest i hadn't hadn't heard it before but then i checked it out and i was like this is this is something like totally like different and uh super cool man um so we, we're all big, big fans here yeah absolutely uh I, I listened to your entire catalog like probably all week and uh oh man <laughs> okay. I, I gotta know i gotta know what is what is your inspiration for this project? Oh, I mean, life, I guess. I don't know. Like, my... Uh, I've never been the type of person... I don't make, like, mood boards or anything. Like, I know there's a lot of artists who... They have, like, a visual concept for something and they, like, write around it or whatever, but that's not uh, typically how I've done things. It's, like, first and foremost, this project is just kind of like an outlet for me. Uh... And so, you know, people have asked about the genre and, like, what inspires it and stuff. And, like, it's not, again, it's not something that I intentionally set out to, like, do something different. But, like, I just, I listen to a lot of music. I'm a writing engineer and producer as well. And I, uh, you know, sometimes I like to do weird stuff and, I don't know, change it up like i'm not always feeling the same way so my i think my influences are really just my my moods and life that's it i i really love the the alternative rock kind of punk concept but with all the horns and the piano arrangements it, it's just fantastic i i just want to compliment you on your ability to do that thank you <laughs> i appreciate it yeah it's such a unique sound i mean it's it, it was awesome to listen to all anything day. the same as Johnny Manchild. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, and I agree. Uh, so, but your new your new single, "O oh Songbird," has been described as systematically alluring, uh, upbeat, and infectious. Can you share the inspiration behind the song and what led to its creation? Yeah. Uh, so you know, I was in lockdown in Oklahoma during COVID, and a bunch of shit happened, as it does. It just kind of kept piling on. It's, you know, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement was going on, and I, you know, people getting tear gassed, fucking chicken broken, people getting hurt, and more than that, and, and just the move, like the protests were, I, I saw like a lot of people I consider like friends or family that had a, I, I didn't realize that they had these kind of super backwards, fucked up opinions on things. Agreed. It's just stuff that you don't realize until it's like a part of the, like a forefront of the conversation, I guess. And so I, everything felt really shitty and just dark and negative. Uh, and I wrote that as a way, just like, 
you know, I, I know eventually things are going to get better, and there's still good things that are worth, you know, living and doing, like, working towards. Absolutely. Um, and that's it. You know, that's, that's the song. It was definitely a tough time. Um, so for this song, uh, we we hear that you have some March and April tour dates. Uh, any plans of coming to the St. Louis area? Yeah, I hope so. Um, that is actually a fine question. Uh, we're in the middle of booking three different legs of tour. Um, I don't know that we're actually hitting St. Louis on any of these, unfortunately. I think, I don't think that we are. Uh, I'd love to. I, I definitely plan on doing more tours, uh, than just the ones that we're planning for spring. Uh, and hopefully, you know, we're not that far away. It's only like a six hour drive. So we'll, we'll hit it up. I, uh, I, I have a few contacts for you if you're interested in them. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Excellent. Yeah, that'd be um, awesome. I'd love to see that live. I, I think it would be. Absolutely. I know we we were hitting St. Louis. I'm not sure why it got taken off the schedule. I, maybe we just ran out of time or dates didn't line up. Um, yeah, these tours are all uh, with a trio. So that's what we're doing for these tours. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Um, so the new song and video release is accompanied by various bundles and limited items for fans. Like, how do you go... How do you approach creating the special offerings and like what significance do they hold for you and your audience for that stuff? Sorry, you cut out during that first part of the question. Oh, okay. what, what was that? So like your new song and your video release, you got that uh, various bundles and limited items for fans. How do you like approach oh, create and stuff like that? For the pre-sale, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I've been, okay, so I've been doing it for a while and I have a better idea of what fans want and it's mostly just I don't know. I, I, I've i literally had like 10 people call me while on this call, and no one ever calls me, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's the way it goes. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I've got... Um, I know for this record for Rapture Waltz, I had some... I did have some... There after the fact. You know, once you get the songs, you kind of go through everything you've got, you find out which ones work together and then I kind of started combing through the lyrical content and finding like visual concepts uh, and I, I have this artist I work with a lot Shelby Criswell and we kind of go over these things and uh, they honestly they're responsible for a lot of our artwork uh, so I have to shout them out for sure okay um, yeah. but yeah and as far as the boxes go I, over time uh, it became apparent that like fans really want to support the band and the more opportunities i gave them to like get merch and do that the more they took it up so i just you know i keep trying to get creative with what we have available it, it makes it more personal that way too for sure yeah and you know i, I the more fun it can be the better we just kind of had a, a merch fiasco uh over the last two weeks but we're we're starting to recover finally so good to hear um so you mentioned you're you've done uh, you're an arranger and a producer and uh, a, a songwriter, obviously. Um, so how does Johnny Manchild um, how does he approach a new song idea? Uh, okay, he uh, lays on the floor for about two or three weeks, uh, <laughs> just absolutely. <laughs> just hating everything because he can't write a goddamn song and he talks to his mom and all of his friends and they tell him to shut the fuck up because you're going to write another one and it's going to be fine and then he says no I'm never going to write anything again and then usually the next day something just comes out in like 30 seconds and it's pretty good so that's we're, that's what happens we're hysterically laughing so silently because two of us here are songwriters ourselves and we've gone through this similar <laughs> experience I feel it I feel it for sure it's, it's I am not one of those people that has, like, a worksheet or, like, a template, and I sit down and, like, hash a song. For me, I have no choice but to wait until it's ready and until it comes, yeah. which sucks because, <laughs> like, it's also kind of rough because when people ask you how you wrote something, you're just like, I don't fucking know. I was barely there. It just kind of came It came out. <laughs> yeah. No, I 100% understand that. Uh, yeah, that's everything. Um, so, that yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I got to ask, too, like um, – you know, with such a different just sound and different things like that, what, you know, influences or like, what do you listen to? What, like, what have you just, what got you into music? 
Oh, man. Um, well, I mean, I listen to everything as much as I can. I think when... It depends what part of music you're talking about. Uh, I think for performing, I remember one of the earliest things, like I listened to a lot of Marilyn Manson. I listened to Harvey Danger. I liked Dead Kennedys. Uh, yeah. I remember the, the first thing that got me into recording was actually Nine Inch Nails because so, I had... Um, they, I remember when the, when the record with Teeth came out, they had on their website, they had the project files downloadable. So you could actually download all the sessions and you could see how they put them together. And for me, you know, I was like 11. I, I was blown the fuck away. And that's how I got into uh, mixing. I would try and r r mix the songs myself and get them there. And so Nine Inch Nails is definitely responsible for my introduction to that. And then as far as performing and all that, I don't know, it was a lot of punk, a lot of grunge, Queens of the Stone Age, Foo Fighters, Green Day, uh, Weezer, nice. um, Bad Brains, like it, it went all over the place. I've, eventually I got really into Ben Folds, and then I got into mm. Fiona Apple in a big way. Um, and from there, you know, Regina Specter, I got into Esperanza Spalding, started getting into jazz, and that got me to Snarky Puppy, and Thank You Scientist, and... I mean, it, from there, once I got into jazz in school, it kind of just exploded in a million different directions. And I, I grew up with heavy metal music as well. So I, I, I don't know. Depending on the day, I could be listening to anything. Yeah. Um, Polyjammerous. Yeah. Polyjammerous. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, th and that makes sense because, like, you, you can hear so many different things and, and like, you have a wide wide range of in, uh, influences. So, like, uh, yeah, it definitely makes sense there. Uh Pretty pretty cool. Radio ra Radiohead too. I would be. I can't. I can't not say Radiohead. That's. Uh, I think that's an influence that has yet to fully form into my own songs, but it's there. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan. There you go. Yeah, we. I mean, you're definitely doing some great work, dude. For for sure. Um, like I said, I I listened to all all week i've listened to your catalog uh in the car just working and whatnot and uh it's definitely something very unique and special and it's really pleasing to hear um definitely all the all the different influences and instrumentation and uh just the the lyrics it, it it's definitely great work thank you i appreciate it i think uh i think you'll dig the new record it's in my opinion i think it's a little heavier uh I kind of went into the grungy, like, dirty place a little bit more than I have in the past. Uh, I don't know. The last record we put out was so clean, like, almost like pristine in, in the way it was produced. Um, and so we kind of went the other direction a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm excited to, to hear that for sure. Um, another, another question, just real quick, is uh, your band ha has been successful in building a global following with, like, over 20 million streams to date. What, what role do you think the internet and online platforms played in, in that? Um, everything. Yeah. I mean, you know, we did, what, when it happened, we were doing a single a month in 2019. That was the goal, is to do one single every month. And at the beginning of the year, I didn't have any, I think we had maybe 800 listeners. Um, I had, like, no money. The band wasn't generating money. Like, me might get, like, 50, 75 bucks for a show every now and then. But, like, I didn't know how I was going to afford um, the studio sessions. And then eventually uh, the algorithm picked up. We did a, a collaboration with a YouTuber on a video, and it kind of wound up being this perfect storm. Like, once we caught some attention, uh, we put out a single every month, and uh, we were on release radar, and it just kept picking up and picking up. And that got us into 2020, which was set to be an amazing year. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, it still was. I mean, the, you know, the pandemic happened, and so the only option I had was to turn to the Internet. And I got on Patreon. I started doing uh, in-studio videos. I started doing, you know, writing out the sheet music and making it available for people on Patreon, uh, showing them demos, like, whatever I could. Uh, which is now like a standard part of my like work life, I guess, is like keeping up the Patreon. But I think because COVID happened and everyone turned to the internet even more, it helped us grow there. But in, in return, you know, we haven't done much touring because of the pandemic. And so we've got these numbers that are almost um, kind of a trick. Like the people are definitely there. 
they support us like we they buy the merch and they they come to shows but like it's hard to know where the fans really are and when they'll come out and so like even though we've built up this big following online, we still have our entire career ahead of us of figuring out what that means in the real world. So um, it's it's definitely, the internet has been everything, but it is not, uh, it's not the end all, you know, and there's still so much left to do. <laughs> right, for sure. But I mean, I think that's, uh, I think you can kind of look at that and, and I know what you mean, but like you look at that, like you've had, like you got loyal fans then, right? Like, uh, grassroots building. I mean, I think that's huge. Once you, it's um, definitely more personal that way. Yeah, and you start doing that touring, I think that's, that's definitely gonna kick in. So, so that's huge. A um, lot of work, a lot of work putting into that, and I don't think people understand. Um, but, but huge props to you for doing that without even touring. So I think that's, I think that's pretty huge. Uh, Chris, Thank you. Chris, you want to throw a. So we are we, we're the Pop Punk Pizza Party podcast, right? So uh, we got to ask you about pizza. Yes, yeah, okay. that's that's Chris's We're specialty. We're throwing a pizza party every time we uh, every time we get together. So, uh, my question is, if you could only have one pizza for the rest of your life, what would that be? Oh, very specifically, it's a slice of pizza from Empire Slice House. It's an Oklahoma pizza shop. Nice. It's called the Rock Steady. It is my favorite slice they make. It is uh, this goat cheese chicken balsamic drizzle with mm. like figs and oh god damn it's delicious but the rock steady yeah, i would have incredible. that it's amazing we've got a really good pizza here <laughs> yeah like, that's that sounds good um, is that named after rock steady from the ninja turtles yeah i believe so all their pizzas are like nice. puns or like oh. they've got like the duggy fresh huh. uh, which is really good nice that sounds like a good yeah. place if i ever make it through there i'm gonna what's it called Oh, Empire, Empire Pizza. A- absolutely. Check it out. It's really good. It's like New York style, huge slices, thin crust, really fucking good. Oh, that's my jam. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. It's, it's great. Um, the Dougie Fresh. I'm going to just basically just an ad for Empire now. The Dougie <laughs> Fresh is one of those. Uh, it's like a white pie with mozzarella and confit tomatoes. They like cook the tomatoes mm. in their own juices. It's, it's nuts, man. Oh, that sounds um, incredible. It's such a good piece. I, uh, yeah. I, there was a few years where I couldn't eat pizza at all, and they kind of saved me from that. Because um, I, I worked at pizza places for like five years straight. Um, but yeah, Empire is amazing. Man, oh, yeah. there we go through. So I know you, you're not right now going through St. Louis, but, uh, but kind of which, which areas you hit, and you don't have to go through every day, right? But uh, just tell us about the tour a little bit and uh, where where other people can find you. Yeah, um, so we start on February 21st. Uh, that's the first leg. It's just like a little 10-day run. Uh, and, it's, you know, Texas is its own country, so we're hitting Texas. <laughs> um, we're doing, uh, you know, all the main cities in Texas. Uh, on the way out, we're hitting New Orleans uh, and Memphis, um, and then the second leg, uh, and that leg is with a band called Fast. Uh, the second leg is with a band called Valoris, uh, which I'm really, they're really fucking cool. And uh, they're actually, this is kind of like a childhood thing for me, like a really cool thing, because their bassist, uh, the bassist of Flogging Molly and his wife started the side project Valoris, and they're opening for us on that on that leg. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And so I get, I get to hang out with him, which is fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going all up the West Coast, uh, hitting you know Arizona, New Mexico on the way there, doing the whole Seattle thing, uh, Salt Lake City, Denver on the way back, and then finally third leg in uh, late April into May, we're hitting uh, kind of the upper Midwest and the, all of the East Coast, like into New England and all the way down. So we, I think we've got like 38 dates in uh, like the first like three months, I think. Nice. Wow. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And and then um what when does your your new record come out and um you can pre-order that right now, right? March March 22nd, you can pre-order it. Um we also yeah, our pre-sale, if you go to manchild.band, we're doing a pre-sale right now. Um I'll tell my I have a little sob story if it's if I have time to tell it. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. Um I don't know if you guys are aware of SCP, uh Second City Prince merch. Uh-uh. No. Uh, they went they went viral about two weeks ago. Uh, they were the company that we were working with. Uh, our pre-sale was going great. We made fifty thousand dollars, and we were about to you know wrap up. 
And once we were done, you know, they were going to make all the merch, ship it off, and then give us our profit. And instead, uh, they went bankrupt and closed their doors oh, and lost wow. three point. They lost four million dollars of Holy different co- uh, customers' money, uh, including mine. So I, <laughs> I lost everything, and we had to start over from scratch. So if you want to help us out. Go to go to our website. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, go yeah. check them out. That's for sure. For sure. Wow. And yeah, and that website is Manchild. What was it? Dot dot band. Manchild dot band. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah. go support this man and his band for sure. Yeah, that was our uh, that was our tour fund. So. Damn. <laughs> yeah, that sucks. Um, Where all can the listeners uh, follow you on socials? Uh, we're on. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter and TikTok from Johnny Manchild. On Instagram, you can find us at Poor Bastards. Um, follow us on fucking Bands in Town if you want to. Um, oh, yeah. You know, uh, we're all over. Everywhere. I try to keep up with everything. Uh, Excellent. Um, yeah. So is there anything that, you know, we haven't touched that you just want want everybody to know um, about about you, your band, and, you know, anything? Oh, I don't know. Not not really. I think just as a little thing of gratitude, uh, shit's fucked. Our, our merch company got, you know, messed up, and it's been a crazy couple of years, but I am very happy to be able to tour and, you know, be able to come on things like this and talk about music. Um, and I'm just really happy that I still get to do this. We've been I've been doing this band for eight years, which is a lot longer than a lot of people, you know, make it. So I, I don't know. Uh, that's it. I like playing music. I like playing shows. Come see me play a show. Come Absolutely. listen to my music. You know. Absolutely. We need to get you over to St. Louis sometime. Uh, and if uh, if you don't mind, I'll shoot you a text with a couple of contacts after this interview. Sure. He, you know, I was just in St. Louis. I was on vacation uh, visiting the World Bird Sanctuary. Okay. I was just wondering why you went on vacation to St. Louis, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> my... my my girlfriend is a huge bird fanatic, and again, there's this adoption program at the World Bird Sanctuary, and she adopted a bird. Oh, so nice. She, uh, she wanted she wanted to go see her son. Oh, for sure. Well, that makes sense. That's that's uh, that's awesome. Uh, that is pretty yeah. neat. The, the the sanctuary. So there's there's cool few few cool things in St. Louis. So I will say that, that's and cool. then you know you, you book a door date and you can come see your son again. Uh, <laughs> But uh, absolutely. But yeah, we're gonna we'll definitely have that link up on our page and everything like that for uh, for people to pre-order and and absolutely. check you out and hopefully get you recovered from this uh, fiasco thing. But uh, but we definitely appreciate you coming on here. Uh, this has been this has been fun. Um, it's been good to meet you. Been good absolutely. to check out your stuff. I can't wait for other people to hear it. Um, so man, uh, again, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I, I appreciate it as well. All right. All right, man. You have a great one. All right, you too. Later. Right. Bye.